here's a simple approach to benign prostatic hyperplasia. Benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH, is a histologic diagnosis that refers to the proliferation of glandular epithelial tissue, smooth muscle, and connective tissue within the prostatic transition zone. An average prostate is approximately 20 cc between the ages of 21 and 30. BPH can begin to develop in the early 40s in some men and is found in 50% of men ages 51 to 60. The prevalence of BPH increases steadily with age, reaching 60% at age 60 and 80% at the age of 80. An enlarged prostate gland can result in lower urinary tract symptoms, either by directly obstructing the bladder outlet as enlargement changes the shape of the gland, or by increasing smooth muscle tone and resistance to flow within the enlarged gland. Most men will develop BPH, which can be associated with lower urinary tract symptoms. The common clinical manifestations of lower urinary tract symptoms associated with BPH include storage symptoms like increased daytime frequency, nocturia, urgency, and urinary incontinence, and voiding symptoms that include slow urinary stream, splitting or spraying of the urinary stream, intermittent urinary stream hesitancy, and straining to void. Here's the American Urological Association Guideline recommendation for the management of lower urinary tract symptoms associated with BPH. In the initial evaluation of patients presenting with bothersome lower urinary tract symptoms possibly attributed to BPH, clinicians should obtain a medical history, conduct an appropriate physical examination, utilize the International Prostate Symptom Score, and perform a urinalysis. International Prostate Symptom Score, IPSSS, um, is recommended by the American Urological Association to help establish a diagnosis and to monitor the efficacy of interventions. This is a validated eight-point questionnaire that numerically characterizes the patient's symptoms. Three questions pertain to storage symptoms, frequency, nocturia, urgency, and four questions pertain to voiding, feelings of incomplete emptying, weak stream, intermittency, and straining. The final question assesses self-reported impact of symptoms on patient quality of life. The IPSS is not a reliable diagnostic tool. Rather, it is best used to measure lower urinary tract symptoms after a diagnosis has been established. Patients should be evaluated by their providers 4 to 12 weeks after starting treatment, provided adverse events do not require earlier consultation, to assess, of course, the response to therapy. Reevaluation should always include the IPSS questionnaire. The primary goal of treatment of BPH is to improve the quality of life by minimizing bothersome symptoms of lower urinary tract symptoms and to prevent complications of acute urinary retention. For patients with IPSS score of 0 to 7, we recommend conservative management. This might include fluid restriction, avoiding fluids before bed, daytime elevation of legs and use of compression stockings, as well as adjustment of timing of diuretics to avoid overnight diuresis. Minimization of bladder irritants is also recommended, and discontinuation of medications that might worsen the symptoms. For patients with moderate to severe baseline lower urinary tract symptoms or those unresponsive to conservative management, medical therapy and procedural treatments may be considered. In patients with moderate to severe symptoms, such as an IPSS score of at least 8, or symptoms that significantly impact a patient's quality of life and in patients at risk for urinary retention, clinicians should discuss pharmacologic treatment. One of the medications that we give to patients with BPH is alpha blocker. Blocking alpha adrenergic receptors relaxes the smooth muscles in the prostate and bladder neck, reducing dynamic obstruction and improving urinary flow. There are five main alpha blocker medications. 
The second generation drugs include terazosin and doxazosin, while the third generation drugs are tamsulosin, alfazosin, and psilodosin. Third generation drugs are generally well tolerated with tamsulosin specifically associated with fewer side effects. Given the similar efficacy of different alpha blockers, switching medications is generally not recommended if a patient does not achieve an adequate therapeutic response with the initial drug. Alpha blockers generally takes three to seven days to reach its maximum effect. Because alpha adrenergic receptors are found throughout our vascular and central nervous systems, alpha blockers can have substantial side effects, including hypotension, fatigue, peripheral edema, retrograde ejaculation, and dizziness. Ejaculatory dysfunction results from relaxation of the smooth muscle within the prostatic and ejaculatory ducts with alpha blockade. Some urologists favor alpha zosin to reduce ejaculatory symptoms. Patients on alpha blockers, especially tamsulosin, should be informed of the potential risk of intraoperative floppy iris syndrome during cataract surgery. This condition is believed to result from local smooth muscle inhibition leading to iris prolapse at the incision site during phacal emulsification. What about 5-alpha reductase inhibitor? Prostate growth is androgen dependent and largely mediated by dihydrotestosterone, DHT. Testosterone is converted to DHT by 5-alpha reductase, located in the prostate stromal cells, by blocking the conversion of testosterone to the active metabolite 5-HT, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors shrink the prostate and reduce further growth. For the purpose of symptom improvement, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor monotherapy should be used as treatment option in patients with lower urinary tract symptoms with BPH with an enlarged prostate of at least 30 cc on imaging, or the patient has to have at least a PSA of more than 1.5, or there is a palpable prostate enlargement on digital rectal examination. Medications include finasteride and dutasteride. It usually takes at least three months to see improvements in urinary symptoms, with full prostate volume reduction taking about six months. For this reason, it is very important to inform patients that they won't notice any improvement until three months after starting the medication. Side effects include erectile dysfunction, ejaculatory dysfunction, decreased libido, and possible fertility issues. What about PDE5 inhibitors? Phosphodiesterase 5 or PDE5 is usually present in the prostatic tissue, bladder distrusor, or urinary tract smooth muscle. The inhibition of PDE5 reduces the smooth muscle tone and may reduce prostatic and smooth muscle proliferation. Tadalafil is the most common PDE5 inhibitor. The onset of effect is variable, but usually within hours. PDE5 inhibitor is an alternative therapy for patients who cannot tolerate or prefer not to use alpha blockers or 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Side effects of PDE5 inhibitors include facial flushing, headache, back pain, dyspepsia, and the potential for blue-tinted vision. Well-known contraindications to PDE5 inhibitors include the use of nitrates. 5-alpha reductase inhibitor in combination with alpha blocker should be offered as a treatment option only to patients with lower urinary tract symptoms with a prostate of at least 30 cc on imaging, a PSA level of at least 1.5, or a palpable prostate enlargement on a digital rectal examination. Clinicians should not offer the combination of low-dose daily 5 mg Tadalafil with alpha blockers for the treatment of lower urinary tract symptoms associated with BPH and it offers no advantages in symptom improvement over either agent alone, so no combination. Patients who do not respond to pharmacotherapy 
are intolerant of medical therapy or do not wish to take medications as a long-term option should be referred to a urologic specialist for further evaluation and management. TERP is still considered the gold standard procedure to which all other procedures are compared. Here's some rapid fire concepts to remember. Always use IPSS questionnaire to assess for treatment response. Initial therapy for BPH is usually a alpha blocker. 5-alpha reductase inhibitor can be used as initial therapy for patients with substantially enlarged prostate measuring at least 30 cc in size. PD-5 inhibitors is, is a reasonable option for patients with lower urinary tract symptoms who also have erectile dysfunction or their symptoms are not responding to alpha blockers or 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. This ends my short talk on my approach to BPH.